everybody. We are very happy to have all of you here in the Impact Lab at BMC Switzerland. We will speak about something that is a very strong and important segment for us as BMC. We, are, we will speak about mountain bike and more precisely about mountain bike cross country with, of course, a performance aspect and a little bit of cross country racing as well. BMC stands as a brand for competitive cyclists and our flagship models have always been something that is referring to the spirit of racing. Our cross-country hardtails have always delivered what they were expected to deliver because they were raced at the highest level of World Cup racing. Whenever we have an evolution, a product evolution in this segment, this is always following the evolution of the spirit of racing of the evolution of that segment, okay? So, if we speak about the cross-country hardtail, the current project that we have, the current, sorry, the current bike that we have, this was really, that was in 2000, model year 16, that was really made to win World Cup cross-country races. And why do we take that stance? Is because the World Cup cross-country racers they define exactly what a bike needs to demand. It's not only the racer, but it's also the terrain where they are racing up on. And five years ago, four years ago, it was very clear that the first need to be stiffness, lightweight and compliance. Stiffness one, lightweight, and then three, compliance. We did answer to that recipe at that time with I would say two main ingredients. First of all, our expertise in carbon fiber here from BMC. And the second innovation part that we introduced with this bike from 2016 is the MTT. MTT stands for micro travel technology. Okay. So since then, cross country world cup has evolved and what has come in as a very important point now is control. Now we have a hierarchy of control, stiffness and lightweight. Why control came up so high in the list? Because of the race courses, because of the terrain, because of the race tracks that the cross country Olympic, cross country World Cup racer are using today. They are so much more technical than what they were in the past and you can absolutely lose a race in the descents, in the technical descents. In the past, you were winning races in the uphills. Today, you can lose races in the descents. That is also explaining why most of the cross-country racers are not racing on the World Cup on full suspensions anymore. Here and there, you still see some, but most do not race on hardtails anymore. So this is also reshuffling the cards for the hardtails. And the new hierarchy of a hardtail project that we will go through now is the following one. Stiffness stays very high in the list. Stiffness refers to acceleration, but we'll go to that afterwards. The second point, and this is something that we learned immensely with our full suspension project, the four stroke is the capability. Capability, the bikes, bikes need to be capable. This relates directly to the confidence that you have in your bike. For sure, as a hardtail, as always, it needs to be light. And we are not forgetting, but it's point number four, but we are not forgetting the compliance. Why compliance is at the very bottom of the priority? There are two answers. Either the terrain is so technical that you have to have a full suspension. And here again, I make an allusion to our four stroke that we came up with two years ago with the integrated rad seat post. Or then the compliance can come from the evolution of the mountain bike components in the last five, in the last couple of years. Here, I mostly think of wheels slash rims, tires, and the potential use of tubeless setup. If we speak about that, that gives me the opportunity to go through an important topic. On the bike that we will reveal 
in a couple of minutes, it's a hardtail and you will not see any MTT. The MTT I spoke about before, the micro travel technology from BMC that we launched in 2016, will not be part of the new bike. And the main reason is exactly what I said. We have today the evolution of rim width, much wider, the evolution of the tire section, much bigger, and of course, the use that is spread the more and more of the tubeless setup. The more and more people are riding tubeless, whether it is cross country, mountain bike in general, it's even coming to the road. So what does that allow you to do? It allows you to ride in a much, with much lower pressure without the risk of pinch flatting. And lower pressure means lower traction. Five, six years ago, we were getting that traction through the MTT. The rims were a little bit more narrow. We were pumping them a little bit higher and the traction was insured by the MTT. This is not the case anymore today in modern mountain biking, okay? Nevertheless, just for you, a little hint, on bikes where we don't ride so big tires and so wide rims, we still use the MTT, for instance, our gravel bike, which is called Urs. So that's it a little bit for the introduction, a little bit for the evolution of cross-country riding. I think I did enough of history. Let's look at this new bike. Let's see the new shapes and unveil this great bike. So, as you can see, this bike takes a lot from our four-stroke full suspension bike. And this is also the main reason why the name of this bike, and as a little brother of the four-stroke, is called the two-stroke. You have now a kind of family approach with the four-stroke full suspension, full race bike, and his little bro brother, the two-stroke, very performance-oriented, very punchy ride, uh, bike, and now very, very capable. Remember, stiffness, capability, lightweight, and compliance. We will start with two of them, first of all. We will start with stiffness and lightweight, and for that, I would like to ask Peter, to join us here and to go a little bit into these details. Hello, Peter. Hello. Peter's Hello. name is Peche, so I will call him Peche, but maybe it's written Peter under the... Um, stiffness and lightweight. This is, I would say, something that uh, BMC feels quite at ease. I mean, we have been, or you have been engineering carbon uh, bikes for more than 10 years. We have also been producing bikes here in this facility. And uh, I think this is a little bit our comfort zone. Nevertheless, one of the important topics that I understood for the project is also the, the strength and the robustness of that uh, bike. Can you give us a little bit of an insight? Yes, exactly. Uh, today, it's relatively easy to create a super light frame, but the real challenge is to have a well-balanced product. And in this case, as you mentioned, um, we aimed for the stiffness on top, but also the robustness. And for this, we, we also developed a new test in our test lab. So this bike is a lightweight bike below with one kilo, but is also, I mean, if something happens, if you fall, you should be able to continue to ride. Is that right? Yes, that was the, one of the big target. And I can show you also one little detail, which also helps for the robustness. It's uh, our Rotation stop, this you should know from four stroke, it really prevents the damage of your top tube. So this is something which is adding to the robustness of the whole product. Yeah, especially if somebody falls or something like that, yeah. yeah. It's just an example of yeah. different things we have done to reach this. Okay, thank you. So stiffness and lightweight is, uh, are for sure very important uh, engineering parameters, but what does it help in real life? And for that, I would like to invite Filippo, uh, Filippo Colombo, a very special guest who is uh, with us here in uh, Grenchen at the Impact Lab, and uh, get his uh, feedback on that. Hello, hi. Filippo. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, stiffness, lightweight, you like it, you don't care, you... 
as a, as a pro athlete, as a pro mountain bike uh, sniffness and like to eat are uh, a really big topic of uh, the bike of today. And um, yeah, in a race, uh, stiffness is really a key. Uh, we can just imagine uh, lining up in the start line and go full gas for the first 100 meters to, to, to get the, the, um, the first uh, single track in first position and uh, with not losing power during this uh, acceleration is, is uh, incredibly important. For, for a pro 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 athlete mm -hmm. and uh, second uh, secondly the stiffness is also uh, a big advantage in the downhill because um, we do need to to be precise in our our style of um, of pilotage in the in the downhills and uh, a stiffness uh, it, um, mainly in the in the in the front part of the of the bike helps really much to 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 ride the, the, the bike in the right way to, to really focus on where we we want to go mm -hmm. and um, it helps also prevent flat tires or uh, yes. damage or okay. uh, or um, crashes yeah. so stiffness is really a key a key element uh, for for us very good yeah Thank so stiffness actually allows Filippo to jump out of the gate, at the starting gate, and I think uh, also allows him to be very precise in piloting. I think this kind of experience of avoiding flat tires because you are piloting precisely are very, are very key for, for what you do most. Exactly. So acceleration and precise steering. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, another topic, uh, and here again, I think uh, Pesce will uh, help us, is for sure the capability of the bike. The capability is, let's say, the technical uh, parameter. The benefit is for sure the, the confidence-inspiring riding. And here I'll uh, get some uh, inputs from, from Pesce again. We know that uh, cross-country has evolved for sure, and that's what we mentioned uh, already before. Uh, we have learned a lot with the four-stroke development, and uh, I guess that for a hardtail, it's quite a fine balance that you were working on for this kind of geo approach. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> uh, during the development of four-stroke, we have done a lot of uh, testing in geometry. Mm. So we have done prototypes, real bikes, bikes which can be ridden, and we have also done the same uh, on this bike. So that was an important part of the whole development. And I think I can go straight into some numbers. Yes, Gio. Uh, for example, the head angle is uh, really, really slack for a cross-country bike. Um, it's even slacker than four-stroke. Okay. Um, the reason for this is because this bike has no sag in the back and we compensate this. So in the end, you should feel very similar on this bike and on the four-stroke. Okay, so if you ride the two-stroke and the four-stroke, we compensate the stack of the four-stroke and we should be, or a rider or racer should be in the same position. Yes, that's okay. the idea. Okay, yeah. And in the back, we have very short chain stays, even shorter than on four-stroke, which okay. uh, was possible because there is no suspension. Yeah. And another thing is that we have uh, invested uh, in, f in finding the best center of gravity for the rider. So okay. one piece of this is the low top tube. That gives you a lot of room to be, to be I guess, uh, free and nimble on the bike, but also helps to go lower with the center of gravity. Yeah, it, it helps to, to really use what the bike is able for. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Peche. Uh, on capability, we'll uh, see what uh, Filippo can tell us if this is something that he cares about. Sure, um, the feeling that gives uh, a bike, in the, especially in the distance, is uh, a real topic. And um, feeling good and feeling safe on the bike is, uh, is what we, we look for in a, in a cross country. And, um, being fast, but also uh, 
be able to recover in the distance is okay. really is really important for us to, to be able to then start again the, the next half mm. in uh, full gas. So um, yeah, the, the, the slope of the angle uh, for sure helps to, to be fast, mm -hmm. but also to be, to be relaxed in the mm -hmm. distance and right. to um, uh, yeah, the, not too much have the, the, the fear of, uh, of okay. some, some crashes or yeah. something like this. Okay, important ingredients, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to be for able sure. to, to be able to uh, recover or relax in a 17 second downhill. I mean, this is the world of Filippo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, even if I said before, uh, compliance is point number four. I mean, we cyclists, we are sitting on a bike. Some are sitting longer than, than others. Compliance is still something that uh, I would say uh, Peter can give us a couple of uh, insights on. Uh, it's not something that we have completely let go. It's also not because we have no MTT anymore that we have done nothing for compliance. Please. Yes, so we, we use what already works on, on road bikes and our gravel bikes, the D-shape seat post. Uh, the D-shape is ideally designed to get the compliance with lightweight. We also have a very low top tube, low seat stays. The seat stay profile is optimized. And all this together um, brings the ideal compliance. Okay. So D-shaped seat post allows the post to flex. A high post out allows, yes, uh, the, has, a, has a big lever. The low top tube generates basically a long seat post extension, which yes. also helps to get the compliance we are looking for. And the shapes of the seat stays are dedicated to that compliance. Thank you very much. Maybe compliance is not really something that Filippo is needing, we'll see. Uh, compliance, you like it or not? Sure, maybe it's not that important as a, as a topic before in, in races, but even in, in, the, in training, Compliance is really, really important because we spend, uh, uh, as, a, as a pro mountain bike, we spend really many, many hours on the bike. Uh, we talk about pretty often more than four hours yes, uh, a, <laughs> a day uh, on, a, on, the, on the bike. So uh, we can imagine that, that a really stiff, uh, just stiff bike can make really tired, especially in the, in the back and can uh, uh, create some some physical issues so um, having a, a bit of comfort also in a, in a hardtail bike uh, can really help to, to perform to perform the, at the at our best even after uh, five or uh, six hours on the on the bike so you can imagine to, to race a marathon on this bike uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, even uh, after some hours uh, on it, uh, we, can, we can still perform on our best. Uh huh. Okay. Yes, Thanks. thank you. So that means that uh, Filippo is training at least for four hours. Uh, so that gives us for everybody else the opportunity for sure to ride marathon, like Filippo mentioned, but also for others that are benefiting from that compliance factor for a shorter ride of one and a half or two hours. Okay. Great. So that means that with the bike we have here, we are ticking a couple of boxes. This bike is fast because it is stiff. This bike is confidence inspiring because of the capability of the bike, which is generated by the geo of the bike, explained by Beshe. A lot of, lot of learnings came out of the full suspension four stroke for that. Then this bike is lightweight, it's below 1,000 grams. Nevertheless, it is robust, thanks to the right mix of choosing carbon fibers, as Pesha said. And this bike is compliant. And this is also important, as we saw, even for people like Filippo. I think this bike is not only all that, but this bike is it's great looking. It's absolutely nice, and we don't really know why. But for that, or to understand that, I'd like to invite Christoph with me. 
Hello, Hello Christoph. Christoph is in charge of industrial design here at BMC, and he will explain us why it's so nice. Okay, uh, first of all, a bike that uh, is supposed to go fast also needs to look super fast. I mean, this is kind of a principle, and as Filippo said, I mean, going through these corners, uh, accelerating from, from the starting line, uh, this is when you look at the bike or just get on the bike, uh, you get an instant feeling just at the start how this bike looks. And this is super important that uh, when you get on the bike that you go like, wow, this is super nice. This is going to take me to the finish line super quick. And um, yeah, here we, since this bike needs to be like aggressive and fast, we got inspired from uh, the stealth fighter jets. Uh, they have kind of a parting line in the middle and then uh, like the, the top surface uh, uh, at the bottom surface, it gets chamfered to the, to the middle. And this is also what we try to uh, put on on the shaping of this frame. Mm -hmm. So like all the ingredients we got uh, from, from Pesha's side, uh, like uh, on the lower line, a super stiff, uh, big volume tube. And then on the top line, uh, kind of a thin, flat, edgy tube that uh, shows this uh, aggressiveness. Uh, what also helped a lot is actually that we could bring uh, the, the top tube down, so we could kind of align these two lines better. So the top line is not straight, but we could kind of merge, merge it, uh, the seat stay and the, the top tube uh, in this middle area. And I guess this uh, middle part where like all these tubes meet, that's kind of the, of the design uh, top feature. There it really comes together. Uh, it's the, the, the most important character of this bike. We also have kind of a, of a line that continues. I mean, straight lines, straight tubes, they also talk, yeah. Uh, super fast and um, yeah this all came together I mean this super nice frame we are really all super excited about it it's super cool we like it a lot and this all came together uh, with uh, the work from Pesha and the design part so uh, one one without the other it would not be possible strong collaboration looks yes. like okay yes Thank you very much, Christoph. Now we know why this bike is looking so great. I just want to continue from here on and give you a short recap of this two-stroke O1 platform. So, as you know, we have the integrated fork stopper that Peugeot was presenting. We have fully integrated cable routings. We have a dropper post readiness. What does it mean? We have spoken about D-shaped seat posts for more compliance, but this bike is completely, is fully dropper post compatible. So I recap that. It is a shim that is delivered that closes the flat part of the D-shape that brings it to a 27.2 round shape and afterwards compatible with 27.2 dropper posts. We have the more and more 27.2 dropper posts thanks to the emergence of gravel riding. Okay, then afterwards we have wide tire clearance. You need wide tires because you want to have wider rims and you want to ride tubeless. And at the end, last but not least, we have all the integrated protection. We start at the chain stay, integrated really. We do have a chain suck plate and from the ones that know the four stroke, we have the same helicopter tape at the bottom of the down tube. So these are protecting factors. You know now why your bike is looking great and fast, and now you know that this bike will still, long for a long time, look great and fast. So, main part was about speaking about this two-stroke O1 carbon platform. To make, to complete, to make a full family, we also have a little brother of the two-stroke, and it is an alloy version. It's a two-stroke AL. Exactly the same main feature, a very, very capable geometry, okay? In terms of lines and everything, you will look at it and you will recognize right away. We have really the big brother from the four-stroke, two-stroke O1 and two-stroke AL that are clearly part 
of the same family. On the two-stroke AL, we have internal cable routing, we do have the same wide tire clearance, and we also do have an integrated uh, frame protection on the chainstay. So whether it is with the two-stroke O1 or the two-stroke alloy platform, this allows us to build a range. We have decided for the first year to go for four models in the two-stroke O1 and two models on the two-stroke alloy. It's a family of six, and we think that we are about to reinvent cross-country hardtail bikes. I think that's it from our part. Thank you very much to all the participants. Thank you guys to have tuned in in our Impact Lab to BMC Switzerland. We invite you to ask questions, post and everything on social media. And of course, go down to the closest BMC dealer and step on this new two-stroke for a bike experience. Thank you very much for everything and keep on riding. Cheers.